Okay, let's now talk about multiplication of fractions. Let's try to give a meaningful value to the product of two-thirds and seven-fifths. Now what we've got to help us out are our basic beliefs about the mechanics of fractions. We like to believe these are the fundamental principles for how fractions work. We have a system of arithmetic where these rules hold no matter what. And I'm going to hold us to that idea that they hold no matter what. In fact, the way to get to multiplication of fractions is actually use belief number three. Say this is to hold no matter what. In which case, when I look at say two-thirds times seven-fifths, the one I want to do, I see something times a fraction. The rule says something times a fraction is just adjust the numerator that way. Okay, I'm going to literally copy belief number three. There'll be that something times the numerator all over that same denominator, which is a five. Did I copy that correctly? Literally copy it? I think I did. I think I did. Um, when I look at that now, I see, oh, actually I've got belief number three again. Um, I can switch the order. This is seven times two thirds. That's just basic arithmetic there, rules of arithmetic. But seven times a fraction would be, oh, just multiply the numerator. So I'm going to do this again. This is actually uh, 14 thirds on the top and five on the bottom. I don't like thirds on the top. No one likes thirds on the top. How can I get rid of thirds on the top? Use belief number four. Let's multiply top and bottom by three. By three, by three, that changes nothing. But then I see by this rule, oh, oh, that really cancels. I see what I really have now in terrible board technique. This is actually 14 on the top and actually 15 on the bottom equals 14 fifteenths. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Wow. Let me do that again, but let me actually now do it abstractly. Let's do it, say, for um, I don't know, we'll do it in general fractions, let's do it. So let me keep this part on the board, but let's not make it two thirds and seven fifths exactly. Explicitly, let's now make it A beefs times C deaths. Can we copy what we just did abstractly? You bet we can. So this is, here goes, A beefs times C deaths would be, by belief number four, something times a fraction is just adjust the numerator. Okay, adjust the numerator, a b times the numerator, all over the same denominator. That's belief number four. Okay, I'm being very explicit now. Um, maybe I'll be a little bit sneaky. I don't like b in the top. Let me actually now multiply by b on the top, multiply b in the bottom. Oh, oh, that was using b3. Now I'm using belief number four. There we go. I used that one first. Now I'm using that one. Forgive me. All right, so I'm using these two beliefs and I'm at this point. But then I can say, I know I can reorder multiplications by ordinary arithmetic. A over B, B times A over B, oh, it's just A. So I can see that cancels that if you like. What I've got on the top is A times C. What I've got on the bottom is D times B. But let me write it the other way around, uh, B times D. Because it looks like I just went, huh, the numerator is multiplied, A times C. The denominator is multiplied, B times D. So there is a general rule for multiplying fractions, which I'm sure is something you've seen in your early grades as well. But do you know what? It actually follows as a logical consequence of this. Amazing. Okay, I need to point something out. Not once do I ever mention the word of in our discussion about fractions and the rules of arithmetic behind them. No mention of the word of there. Yet so much of the curriculum actually puts a big focus on the word of. And it's because of a particular reason, a lovely coincidence in mathematics. So let's look at this question from early grades. Draw me a picture of two-thirds of four-fifths. Well, this uh, question's a bit incomplete. It should be two-thirds of four-fifths of something. So I guess four-fifths of a general whole. And the whole we always talk about is pi. So let me draw a picture of two-thirds of four-fifths of a pi. And it's easy to draw rectangular pies because then I can draw fractions much more easily. Easilier, is that a word? Okay, there's a rectangular pie. I'll, first of all, I want four fifths of that pie. So let me divide it into fifths. So here's a pie divided into exact perfect fifths, clearly. And I want four fifths of the pie. So I want four copies of a fifth. So here's one fifth, here's the second fifth, here's the third fifth, here's the fourth fifth, and that's all I need, four fifths. Bingo, there's four fifths of the pie. Now I want two-thirds of four-fifths of the pi, which means I need to take this four-fifths and divide it into thirds. Okay, divide it into perfect thirds. There they are. And I want two of those thirds. So here's one of those thirds. And a second one of those thirds. There it is. There is two-thirds of four-fifths of the pi. In fact, I don't want this. Let me unshade it. There we go. Now I can really see there is my two-thirds of four-fifths of the pi. 
Now it seems awfully compelling to want to just actually make these lines go all the way across because then I actually see, oh, the whole pi was actually divided into 15 parts. Uh, yep, 3 by 5, 15 parts, of which 2 by 4, 8 are shaded. So this actually represents 8 fifteenths of the pi. So what's 2 thirds of 4 fifths of a pi? It's 8 fifteenths of a pi. All right, but here's the amazing coincidence. So this top here, number here is the number of shaded parts. Shaded parts. And this here is the total number of parts. And in fact, I actually even said it. The total number of parts was actually 3 by 5. 3 times 5 is what that 15 really is. And the shaded parts is really 2 by 4. 2 by 4. The 8 there is really 2 times 4. What's amazing, it looks as though I just took the numerators of these fractions, 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 5 is 15, and I wrote the answer is numerators multiplied together, denominators multiplied together, which had to be exactly what we just derived moments ago for multiplying fractions. It turns out by fabulous coincidence, if you're doing parts of a part of a whole, then what you're actually be doing is the same mechanics as the rule that ends up being the multiplication of fractions. Now, because of that lovely coincidence, the cricket often said, cricket often says let's make that the definition of multiplication. Seems kind of weird and random to me, at least it did as a kid, but now I see multiplication really comes from logical thinking first, and what a beautiful coincidence it turns that to be matching this of thinking as well. And if you're feeling really game, you can try to make this a general argument. Um, if you want to try to show that A beats of C deeths of a pi, if you draw a picture of that, what you do is you take your pi, you'll first you want C deeths of pi, so you want deeths. So you'll have D columns all the way across like this. You want C deeths of them, so you want say just C of them, just C of them. That represents C deeths of the pi. Then I want a beefs of that pi, so divide this into beefs. Okay, this is sounding very strange. Divide it into beefs, and then I want a beefs. So maybe you want just a of them. You want this part of it all. Then maybe you can actually see what you've really got here, the shaded part of it. I can see it right now, I might as well do it myself, solving my own problem. I've got a by c, a by c parts are shaded, and the total number of parts is b parts by d parts, b by d. Bingo. A beefs of c d's of the pi turns out to be that amount of fraction of pi, which is exactly the formula we had for multiplying fractions. What a beautiful coincidence that is. That's why people say of means multiply. Whoa. But my point is, multiplication comes first, then the connection to of. Well, I think the curriculum has it backwards, personally. Actually, let me end this video with one final tidbit. Show that dividing a number by n is the same as multiplying the number by 1 nth. That is, if I take a number a and divide by n, Please show me it's the same as multiplying that number by 1 nth, so 1 nth times a. Show me that they are actually the same thing. All right, well, okay, well, um, this is a division problem. We said fractions are answers to division problems. If I wrote this as a fraction, this is really a divided by n. So that's what the first one is. a divided by n is that. All right, what's 1 nth times a? Well, by ordinary arithmetic, I'm going to switch this around. That's a times 1 nth. And then by belief number three, a, a quantity times a fraction is just multiply the numerator. So I get a times one, numerator multiplied by a, same denominator, same denominator. a times one is a, this is a nth. Oh, they are the same thing. So actually, if you ever want to divide a quantity by two, just multiply by a half. If you want to divide a quantity by three, just multiply by a third. If you want to divide a quantity by seven, just multiply by one seventh. Fabulous.